If you know me or Steph, you'd know we love our coffee, whether we're brewing at home or enjoying a cafe. That's why Roasting Warehouse is our go-to. And right now, we're hooked on their Breakfast Club blend. It's smooth, balanced, and perfect for starting the day. And here's the best part. As an exclusive sponsor of the podcast, they have been generous enough to offer all listeners 15% off. Head to their website, www.roastingwarehouse.com.au and use the code FOOTBALLFRIENDS at checkout to claim your discount. It's the perfect time to stock up so you can bring the cafe experience home too. And it's their leading goal scorer and captain, Stefan Mork. The double promotion. The nerves come into it. Like, in your head, you're thinking, fuck, we could be playing in the Prem this year. It was, it was worse. It was worse when you were seeing other teams play. The celebrations obviously kick off. Big Ed Sheeran comes in. He obviously a big fan and he comes to games whenever he's not basically touring the world. Are there any big big players that are that are playing or not really? You've got um, Moussa Dembele, that's at, he's at Etifak as well. Um, he had a hell of a career. Football Friends! Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Football Friends with Ben and Steph. Football's back and we did our first A-League's weekly wrap-up show which you guys need to go and check out. But today we're back for our Thursday normal guest episode and we've got a big guest on today, Steph. We do. We had obviously big Javi Lopez last week, which the the feedback's been amazing about. He's he's such a good guy. And and this time we've gone for an Australian um, and Cam Burgess, perfect timing. He's just played 90 minutes against Japan, um, put in an amazing performance and then got rewarded at his club team. With Ipswich, um, unfortunately, they lost 2-0 to Everton. I, I'm actually not sure Ipswich will win a game this year. Luckily, Cam's not here to hear that. I hope <laughs> they do for his sake. Um, I hope they can somehow go on a roll. Um, but he you know, he, he spoke about it in the episode, obviously wanting to make the debut. He was disappointed about you know, not being, you know, coming on for the first game, but he understands it's you know, the Premier League. They've signed a lot of players. So fingers crossed now that he's got his chance, he keeps on playing because it's great for the national team, it's great for him personally. Uh, and as you'll hear here, um, we played with him a little bit in the junior national team, so he was always a top player, but he's really worked his way um, by sticking it over in the UK. Easy option was to come back to Australia, but he's, he's stuck it out and he's kind of getting his rewards now. So it's amazing to hear. Um, we hope you guys will enjoy listening in. And joining us today, it's Big Cam Burgess. Welcome to the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. It's good to uh, good to get you on. Um, obviously, it's never easy with uh, with overseas players um, to get get them on the show, but we really appreciate your time. Um, I guess, firstly, uh, we want to go all the way back um, to your junior career um, and where where did it all start? Obviously, you're a Perth boy. What was your junior club, and then how did you kind of um, make the decision to get overseas. Why did you do that? Um, but yeah, yeah. So I started. Um, we moved over to Oz when I was ten. So my first club would have been Sorrento um, to begin with for like maybe a year or two. That was like seeing kids playing football on the street. What club do they play for? Go and join there, and then you go to school, and then you start learning like different teams and stuff. Um, so then my Probably main junior team was uh, ECU Junior Club. It's changed to Red Star now. Um, so uh, I played for them for most of like my sort of junior sort of age groups and stuff. And that's like probably leads into going overseas. Like there's a lot of boys that played for them that ended up going overseas basically, and it just kind of went from there. Um, there was a a guy who sort of set up trials and all that sort of stuff, um, and all the boys went over. It was like, but. It's ridiculous how many lads from that club have actually ended up like going over. Even if they went for a little bit, they went over and done quite well and stayed for a while and mostly in, in the UK. Um and then yeah, they've ended up having pretty good sort of careers really. Um like the Williams brothers or the three of them. Um 
you got Mitch Oxborough, you guys played the other, the other week, Steph. Um, yeah. Jordan Lydons, that obviously we, we sort of played with in our um, Young Socceroos team and stuff like that. And Jack Idell, there's there's loads to be fair. So yeah, wow, so quite a few, quite a few decent names. Um, yeah, must have been something going right at that club at the time. <laughs> I don't know. I just like I guess like um, that age group a few years um, above us. Um, they were stacked. They had some. They had some good players to be fair. Alex Grant, he was another one who went across. Um, Brandon O'Neill, that like obviously the. Um, Aaron and Ryan Williams as well. Then like that—that that was their sort of age group. They were um, they were good to be fair. So um, yeah, kind of they just went and got trials and stuff like that. Played well, and then we just joined them after that. Yeah, it's hot. You um, so were you involved with Perth Glory at all before you went overseas? Yeah, we done. Um, I reckon I was maybe fourteen, fourteen or fifteen. And we used to do like the the old, you know, before school train and get up at like three o'clock in the morning or something stupid like that to go and to go and train. Um and then just went to school from there. And then we used to get like that was when like oh I think it's changed a lot now, but you know, the, the youth league um yeah. played like I don't know, three or four games in that basically. Um used to get like the Friday off school to go and fly and play like Gold Coast or someone. Um yeah, that was pretty. That was pretty good. To be fair, they were good, like good times, um, like training with glory and stuff. I enjoyed it. So, obviously, you've decided to go overseas. What was the main reasoning behind that? You you didn't see a pathway at Perth Glory to get to the first team, or you just thought if you've got a chance to go straight, you know, to Europe to to the UK, um, that was the better option for you. Yeah, I don't know, really. To be fair, like, you know what the the maddest thing is when I um. I was doing like the glory thing and stuff like that, and then um, with my like with ECU with my club, um, and I was like, I think it was the end of year eleven, um, like going into the last year of school, um, and I ended up uh, like if I wasn't going to play football, I wanted to do like architecture or something like that, like, and I ended up accepting a job, like believe it or not, to do um, like drafting, sort of just like that similar sort of pathway. Yeah. Um, and I went to that like, job interview, and they went to me like, "Oh, if you want, you could, like the, we we like you, we'll take you." Um, it's like I would have had to like go across to I think it was Newcastle or something like that, and go and like do like work over there sort of thing. And it was like, if you want, like if you because you might like change your mind on like what you want to do with your life. Um, what we can do is we'll like hold the position for a year, so then you can finish your last year at school and then like come and join us. And it was in that last year that's when I went like and done the trials and stuff like that. Um, probably just a little bit of like, well, other boys have done it. Let's go and sort of do it. Um, give it a go. See what's like. See what kind of standard you're at. And yeah, ended up working out pretty well. Um, and I had to ring them back up and say I'm not taking the job anymore. Fucking so, hell! Yeah. You've been drawing up yeah. houses, and now you're in the prep. Yeah, could have been. Yeah, I know. Yeah, mad, isn't it? Could have <laughs> went a different way. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of how it started. It was just a case of that. It just felt like it was like, yeah, let's go and give it a go, see what it's like. Um, yeah, I think I remember like my dad saying to me like, "Do you fancy going over and like trying out and see what see what it's like, basically?" And then yeah, just went over and gave it a good crack, really. How was the um, how was the initial phase when you went over? It was obviously was that a trial then? Yeah, so I think well, I was supposed to go. Aston Villa, Fulham, and Everton, and I uh, I went to Villa and I was there. That was the one I was supposed to be there the longest. That was um, Lido was there, um, so it was like set up like I trained with their team, um, and we trained like Monday, Friday, or whatever it was, and like I was training good. I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm doing I'm doing well here. I'm like I'm in a good place, sort of thing, and then it came to this game and we played against like a. It wasn't like another like club. It was like a you know like one of these like performance academy type things. Yeah. Um, we played against them, and I like shot back past the the keeper, and the striker nipped in and scored, and I've just gone <laughs> and just absolutely <laughs> shat it, like just shat it, and I like my head dropped. I just like like no recovery, you know, like one just like proper <laughs> gone. Um, and I went from yeah, we, we like this kid, we could sign him to. 
just not, don't even don't even come back the second week basically. Um, wow. Yeah, just went yeah proper tits <laughs> up. So, um, so that was that, and then I spent like that week I had like where I didn't come back. I went up to Scotland like just to see family and stuff and trained for a bit. Um, my um, dad's like real good friend is like he was like goalkeeper coach at Motherwell so I went and trained there for a bit and did a little bit of training at Hearts um just to sort of fill the week really before mm. I had to go down to Fulham and then like the Fulham one came and I was like you know what I can't go back to Perth here and tell all the boys that I didn't get picked like, <laughs> <laughs> like a right shit so I was like right I've got I've got to make it here um and Fulham was ledge to be fair we um Training was good. The weather was better than it was in Birmingham. Like Aston Villa's like training grounds, great training ground, but it's in like the back house of nowhere, really. Yeah. It's not. Um, whereas like Fulham's is like you're in like in amongst houses and stuff like that. It's like a nice place to be. Um, so rocked up, the sun shining. It was good. Um, and trained well. And then we played, we played uh, MK Dons um, in like a friendly. And I, I don't know what it was, but it was like that was like the. I get obviously it was a few years after that, but like you know, like the the Delhi Alleys, like when they were coming through there, that's where he went came yeah. through. So they were like total soccer, but weren't like amazing at it. So like they were like trying to play out from the back, and we we're just nipping the ball off them and like scoring. It was like end up being like six nil or something like that. And I'm like, like we were physically stronger than them as well. So I'm just like they're spraying diags to these rapid wingers that we had. <laughs> looking looking a million dollars basically and end up uh end up getting picked so i was like yes buzzing um i think so they they went they like they said i'll oh, stay for the second week and don't go to everton basically uh so i was like yeah right that's cool um and we were supposed to play tottenham in the end of the next week and i'm thinking oh shit better be able to play, to play well yeah and the game got called off for some reason and we just had like an in-house like bounce game and at the end of it like they I remember my, my dad tells his story as well. Like he's like, um, so after it was like, oh, told my dad to come into the office, sort of thing. Like they they showed him around the training ground and all that sort of stuff. And he's thinking, he goes to me now. And he goes like, um, oh, I'm thinking they're gonna say to him, oh, here's the training ground, just like token gesture, thanks for coming, but <laughs> you're not good enough type thing. Yeah. And they um, and they like sat us both down. Was like, oh, we're gonna offer you a contract. And his face was like. <laughs> yeah, oh. she got one, did he? <laughs> so, That's um, too good. Yeah, so that was that was that. Just um came back to, to Perth for I reckon that was about the March or something like that, maybe. March, April. Um came back to Perth and was back over there full time from July. So that oh. was that. That's, That's too good. You dodged fucking you dodged Birmingham and Liverpool for fucking the one of the best areas. That's what I mean. It. Yeah, exactly. It ended up being good and then yeah, it was like and our team was good as well. Like our youth team was was like really good. I think the the best part was like for me was and I probably got lucky, but the, the boys were all none of them were like local. Like my direct age group there was only one boy who was like from London. The rest of the boys were from like all over the world really, so like after training and that you're not getting like homesick or anything you're with them all the time you're out like i don't know going to the cinema or playing golf or like just doing like whatever just like keeping occupied you wouldn't even turn back up to your digs at like till about 10 at night sometimes so <laughs> um like you would it was it was sweet it was the best yeah well such a big such a big move though obviously at, at a relatively young age like you're saying it obviously helped having boys that were probably in the same boat but did you find like any area where you really struggled in or was it missing mates? Was it, you know, being more independent on your own or you kind of thrived with that? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't struggle with anything, you know, um, I probably, maybe my football ability a bit, but no, nah, <laughs> um, no, nah, it was, it was sweet. I was like, I, I loved it. I loved it. Um, Dig was a bit tough a little bit. Like it's just, it's a weird environment. You're living with like a family. Um, but most of the boys live like, that lived in digs there was like two of his in there yeah so i had me and another lad which was which was fine um yeah it was it was sweet i didn't really struggle with anything like i said it was easier because i had like the lads that they weren't from there um but it was yeah there was kind of thing, like even like so you you in the youth team and stuff you'd get like christmas off um 
but like you get like two weeks at Christmas, so I'd be back in, in Perth for like the best part of the summer when everyone's off anyway. Do you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah. off like from school or work or whatever they're doing. Um, and you'd and be the, the same king. in the off-season. You'd be the king going back there, right? Big man up front. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was good. Like, but I just like I'm just enjoying the weather and stuff. Like, good a little holiday, family yeah. for Christmas, and yeah, back again, and I'll see you again in like four or five months. It was like. Literally never thought twice about it. Obviously, you miss your friends and stuff, but my my mates in Perth like are the exact same now as they were when we were fifteen. Like, I can go, I can turn up. They'll be doing the exact same stuff, like um, just going about life the same. They they're the exact same people. We can just go and like have a few beers or whatever and catch up, and we're telling the same stories from like the like the good old days, basically when we we're just growing <laughs> up and just having a laugh. Basically, it was. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I've got it. I had it pretty sweet, to be fair. Then I didn't really have any struggles. Yeah, me and St- me and Steph always had the same. Like we went, we went to the AIS. We thought, fuck, oh fuck, you know, we're gonna miss out on all these parties, all this school. Yeah. But you think you're missing out on everything, and then honestly, every time you go home, it's it's just the same thing over and over again. And most of the people yeah. are still doing the the same shit that they were when you left. So you don't actually miss out on that much. And no, you don't. Compared to what you actually achieve with football, it's it's pretty minuscule. But you said obviously you didn't struggle with the distance and missing your mates and family and things like that. But what about the actual football itself? Like when you first got over there, obviously coming from, you know, ECU, Jundalup, Perth Glory, NYL, how, how was the the gap in quality compared to Australia? Yeah, it was, it was a big jump to be fair. Um, and I remember like when, when I first signed, um, because I signed for Mars, you had to get like international clearance. Um, and I like now, like obviously I play with Mas Luongo now, and he was the same. Like when I just remember, like you take it takes ages to come through. I think I don't think I was able to play a game until maybe um, like October or something like that. Um, right. Like I had to play for like under like the age group below because they were friendly games, and like I'd be like sitting in the gym, what like while they're all playing, and like I couldn't play. Um, so I guess when it came time to play, and then. You kind of over there. It's like your your youth team is like under seventeens and under eighteen. So like it's just called the under eighteens, and you like you're basically a first year and a second year. So as a first year, I like obviously spent a third of the season not able to play, and then after that, I don't think I played like loads and loads. Um, but then like it would get like towards like the end of the season where you're like fighting because we had a good team like fighting for like the league or, or whatever it would be and then because like I wasn't playing as much maybe or like the older boys were playing in front of me um, I'd end up playing like under 21s like a couple of games um, so you were you were always like helped to be fair like if they like obviously they, they must have seen Sutton and all of us like we were, we were a good team and good players um, but you just they just find a way to like help you develop sort of thing and and then as my second year it was like the best ever like we I think we my first year we won we won the league but like I said I don't think I I, I played a, a bit but I don't think I played like loads um from what I remember and then the second season uh when we were second years we went to we got to the youth cup final which is like that's like the holy grail of like or back then it was of like the youth team sort of thing um and we were like we went to the Dallas Cup we won that one of the years um yeah we, we were like a good team like had good players uh, or what you thought like you know when you you talk about your youth team days and you're like oh only one or two will make it you always get told that sort of stuff and we we're going nah no way <laughs> this team's too good um and then it ends up being true anyway like what about now is there any big players that are, big players that are that are playing or not really you You've got um trying to go for the team. So Marek Rodak was our goalkeeper. He's just signed for um Al Etifak, uh, Steven Gerrard's team. He's he was at Fulham right the way through until just this season. Um yeah. uh played some games in the Premier League, played a lot of games in the championship. Um so he's had a pretty good career. Uh trying to go through one of the defenders I've played with um Liam Donnelly, he's at um, Kilmarnock now. Had uh, played a fair few games in Scotland. Um, centre midfielder uh, went back. He was American. Went back to the MLS. Anderson Hyman, and then like further up the pitch, you got some some good ones. You got um, Pat Roberts, who's at Sunderland. 
Yeah. You, you got bought from uh, Man City, bought him for like yeah. 14 or 15 million or something like that when like he made his debut in the first team and he was off, basically. Um, and then um, Moussa Dembele, that's at, he's at Etifak as well. Um, he had a hell of a career, done well at Celtic. He went across to France Leon. and played, went to, yeah. yeah. Not bad. Went to Atletico Madrid, yeah. So he's uh, he was the main man up front. He, was, he actually signed his contract the day I did as well. So um pretty crazy. Buy one get one free basically. Yeah. <laughs> was he was he was he miles above everyone else? Obviously the career he's had is unbelievable, but back then when you first came in were you like fucking hell this guy is another level. Yeah, they, they so they signed him from PSG and like you, there was some stuff he'd done, you'd see the coaches just smiling going, Yeah, we've got a good in here sort of thing. Like he was <laughs> he was good. Like but he was the same like, I think like the year above us and a, uh, yeah, the year above us, a couple of years above us, there was some good like strikers and stuff there. Um, like we had Collie Woodrow, um, who's at Luton now. Um, he was a good striker. So like even Moose like wouldn't play all the games until then. Like, when we got a second year, he was like, "This guy's the main man. Like he he's good." And then I think when we were, it was when we were second years, he made his debut in the Prem for for Fulham anyway. Um, so yeah, it wasn't, he was what, 18 months at the club as a, he was one of the youngest as well. So he'd been like 17 or something like that, making his debut in the Prem. So yeah. Who's, uh, whose boots were you cleaning back then? And did they give you any, any good Christmas presents or what? No, we didn't to be fair. I don't know. I don't know why. Like we, I reckon we're probably like the first age group where that sort of started to get scrapped a little bit. Oh, you didn't, um, you didn't clean we, any boots? We didn't clean boots, no. We had, we had jobs. Um, you had to clean, like, the bowls and, like, bring the waters out for training and that sort of stuff. But I don't know, it must have been, like, I don't know, guys before us must have done a shit job on them and we just got <laughs> scrapped. Because the kit men used to do it like, at Fulham. The oh, first team fuck. kit men used to, uh, yeah, they used to do it. They are probably taking all the money off them as well, to be fair. Yeah, probably. Um, but, yeah, that, the, uh, it's the same, like, Ipswich now, like, the... We when I first came, the young boys used to do it, and like they were crap at them. They just didn't want to do it, so it's just been scrapped. And you either do your own, or like the kit man does it, or or whatever. It's yeah, it's gone, fully gone from the game. That now it's gone. Game's gone. Do you guys get that? Do you like are you a club? Nah, fuck, nah. fucking hell! If you told a young boy to do that, they'd probably tell, tell you to go and fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah, it's getting that way, isn't it? Like there's like this. The like, don't get me wrong, like. So, you know, when you hear people talking about like that stuff's good for like, it's good grounding and like, yeah. like helps you learn and all that sort of stuff. Like, I definitely agree with that. But like our group, as much as we didn't have to do those jobs, we still wouldn't like, we wouldn't take the pit. Like if the first team told you to yeah. do anything, like you were doing it. But, yeah, um, absolutely. So, yeah. But then there was like, like some of the first team boys back then, they were, they were good guys, you know, like there's some of them that really like helped you out. Um, like we had uh, Philip Sendros, he was an absolute gem of a guy. Like he, he'd help you out like no matter what. Um, Damien Duff, he was like, he helped all the boys out. Like he, um, we were with him at City, uh, Melbourne yeah. City, top guy. Yeah, yeah. good yeah. guy. Yeah, good yeah guy. Top, top guy. Like he, um, he would take the piss out of you as well. But he was, yeah. he was good. Like I remember, like once we, when you know, like you learn to drive and that, everyone's like, yeah, let's get a car. We gotta get a car quick. Come on, boys, we'll all start learning and that. And he, um, a boy in our, our team, he was like one of the later ones to learn. I think he was like the younger one in the group. So like I'd had a car at this point anyway. And I think I was following him like laughing because he's like, he's in the, he's in doing his lesson. He's like come up to a big roundabout next to this training ground. Like, and his car's you know, like, doing like the kangaroo petrol, you know what I mean? He's jumping all over the place. And up speeds uh, Damien Duff and his like G-Wagon or whatever he had then. <laughs> And he's leaning out the window, like screaming his head off at him, and the like the instructor's like, "What's going on here?" Like, <laughs> Damien Duff's just screaming in the window, <laughs> and he's like, "Shit!" He's like, "Go like this and like round and round, like shitting himself." So, <laughs> yeah, so he was he was good. Like he would like he was brilliant with the young boys. So that's good. That's always Paul. good. I think that's um, you know, even us, we're not we're not too old yet, but you are like obviously more mature now. Like for me, that's the best part about it when you can joke around with the young boys. Cause I remember yeah. the same thing when the older players did that with you, it made you feel like part of it, it made you feel more comfortable on the field and you could go to them and ask for help, but you still had to have that respect as well. It's like a fine line. You take the pierce, 
but you can't take it too much or they'll kill you type of thing. That's what I mean. Like you, like nowadays, like you, you can't really like, you obviously it's gone out of the game where you can like, like if you did that as a young boy back then, you just get spashed in training or something like that. Mm. Like we still had that side of it, but I feel like now if you don't, like if uh, you get the you get the young boys who are chirpy and stuff like that, but the ones with attitude, like you just you just end up don't not helping them. Like, yeah, absolutely. You just can't be arsed with them. You know what I mean? Like you, like the chirpy ones, and that's you get some cheeky ones, and they're funny. Like you know, it's like it's a good laugh, but like they can still be respectful at the same time. But it's the ones with like attitude, and you just like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just as long as you do the business on the football field, it doesn't like. That that's the main exactly, thing. Yeah. That's what we're all there for at the end of the day. So even the ones with attitude, if if they're doing the business, you're like, you know what, you're a fucking yeah. prick, but you're yeah. scoring fucking every game. So what are we going to exactly, say? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can't do anything. You um you went on a few loan moves while you're at Fulham, uh, Ross County, Cheltenham, Oldham, Bury, but then obviously you left in 2017 to go to Scunthorpe. What was what was the reason behind? leaving Fulham after such a long time there? I guess, like, so when we were, like, coming through, um, there was, like, there was a lot. The first team wasn't doing, like, amazing. Like, at, like a year or two before I got there, they were in the Europa League final. So, like, done really well. Maybe. And then there was just a period where they would they'd sign, don't get me wrong, really, really good players, but just the club wasn't just wasn't doing great and they changed managers a lot. Um, and then every time a new manager would come in, you'd be like start again. So like you'd like maybe get to train with the first team type of thing a couple of times, and like okay, we're getting somewhere. They they keeping they keep inviting you up to train. And then right next thing you know, the team's doing bad. Start the manager. Um, and then like you'd be back down to the like start again, like till you got called up maybe. Like no manager is gonna come into a job. At that level and right okay let's bring all the young boys up to train sort of yeah. thing so um and then i guess you just every time that happens you're just another six months or a year older right so there's always like these guys coming through and there were some good guys the good players like coming through below us like ryan cessna was coming through below there's matt o'reilly you know what i mean there's there was a lot of good players coming through below us sort of thing so i guess they were just the new young boys that they wanted to sort of promote and yeah just got to the point where time to move on really i guess like i loved it i didn't i didn't, didn't really want to leave but it was just like time to go and get signed somewhere and be part of a first team regular and i'd, I'd like you said I'd spend probably spent maybe two years on loan um and it was like right it's just a natural progression to i don't want to play 21s anymore i don't want to like i want to go and play games and i wasn't going to be playing for Fulham first team at that time like regular so time to Sort of go and make your own career, really. And how was... Uh, obviously, the loan moves were a little bit different, but when you did decide to make the move, obviously, Scunthorpe was a team you went to. What was the reasoning behind choosing them? But then also, how was the, the change? Obviously, you gone from a Premier League team, um, Fulham, obviously, to then a lower league side. Um, was it hard to adjust to that style of football? Obviously, they're grafting and trying to win. Their livelihoods are at stake, where you've got Duffy in the fucking G-Wagon, and then you've got boys probably... <laughs> scrapping for 200 300 500 pounds type of thing what what was the yeah. what was it like to be fair i think like so by the time i'd left fulham um the manager that gave me my debut that type of year i was probably my last year or second last year maybe and all the all the big dog we'd got relegated to the championship at that point um and all the big the big big dogs had, had gone um Dufford gone, like Berbatov's gone, Scott Parker stuck around for maybe another season, he was gone, like so it was kinda like then like there was a few young boys getting sort of debuts and then they were signing like championship players basically. Um from that point forward really. So and also going on loan, which like I had some great loans, like great memories, like enjoyed every one of them. Uh got on really well with all the boys, like it, they weren't really like Apart from Ross County, where I didn't play, um, which is obviously annoying, but like in terms of like being with the boys and what you learn and stuff, like I loved every one of my loans. Um, so, and then when you go to Scunthorpe, so my last two loans were in the same league uh, Scunthorpe were in anyway. Mm. Scunthorpe were just at the top of it, and the loans I was at were near the bottom. That was all. Um, 
and they were at that time like Scunthorpe's way down now like the club kind of went to a bit of bother really but um at that time they were paying good money there was some good good players there um i guess it wasn't like your lower league graft like like there was like ambitions to like we're going to be a championship club next season type thing mm-hmm. um there were the playoffs in league 1 to get out to the championship um before i joined and that first season we got to the playoffs again uh, unfortunately got beat on both occasions but um that's like yeah it was it was a it was a good team there wasn't like that sort of this is good this is a graft like everyone's like worried about where they got where they're heading and stuff it was more that we're looking up type thing so it was it was good um i think i had had them and another at doncaster i could have went to um i went to meet the manager um and i guess i reckon there's maybe an element that that probably would have been a move that would have suited my style of play a bit more um but when you're faced with it, they'd just been promoted to League One versus the team who had just missed out on promotion to like to the championship, that kind of swayed my decision a little bit more so than... And I reckon in hindsight now, if I'd maybe gone the other way, it could have been... I could have been up to the level I'm at now, maybe a little bit quicker, I don't know. You don't know how it's going to go, do you? But yeah. um, but it was, it was a really good team. Um, good players. The, at the end of that first season... Boys got moves for a million pound plus. Um, four or five of the boys got moves. Um, and it was that point when the club went to shit, basically. Um, the owner, yeah, was just like, he kind of, those boys all left. And then the boys who were out of contract that were playing and good players, they didn't get new deals. So the, the rest of us who were left were thinking, right, okay, so we've sold... We probably made like five million in player sales there. We're not giving these boys new contract. There must be good players coming in here. Like we could be flying, and they just nah. <laughs> the guys that got in just weren't. They were like there was a lot of boys who'd like they would be like the first men's team they'd been playing maybe under twenty one somewhere, and they just weren't ready for it. It just didn't. It just went. We got relegated. Went from playoffs to relegation. So it was like a shit show. Is that why you went on loan to Salford for the last year? Yeah, like so stupid from them and, and buzzing for me, but my um my wages stayed the same. Like usually like in like in the UK, obviously you guys have got a bit different in the A League, but if you get promoted your wages go to X amount. If you get relegated they go down to whatever. Yeah. Um but for some reason they didn't put that in mine and a, and a lot of the boys' contracts. So it was like okay, we need to get rid of players here. But none of us are willing to give up our money either. So, and they, the man, a new manager came in and was like, right, we need to get players to leave, even if it's on loan, to get some wages in so we can get the players we want in. And at the time, I just didn't want to be there anymore. Um, and then, yeah, Salford came up and that was with the manager who signed me at Scunthorpe. Um, so I went there and it was like, yeah, I guess... It wasn't. It wasn't amazing. I'll be honest. Like it was like they have this like hype of like with the with the owners and stuff like that. But it, like, I guess there's they were still in a big transition of they just got into the league. There was there was a lot of changes and a lot of like things needed to happen at the club. Um, I guess just a victim of their own success. Really, they got like two or three promotions in a row, and need to grow the club. And yeah, just it was like right, okay, let's go on loan there, and it never really worked out. Like amazing, it was just a mediocre season, really, and just petered out. Yeah, well, um, and from there, had you had you had any sniffs back in Australia? Did you want to come back? Was that ever crossing your mind? Yeah, I mean, a, a couple of times I I thought about it. Um, I guess it's all I'd I'd love to play in the A League at some point. It was always a case of. Um, Plan B is not the right word. It was always a case of, um, well, I know I can do that. Mm. Like I know I can go and prove myself in the A League. Um, I know I'd enjoy it. So there's not that. Like, it's almost like okay, if I if I'm struggling in terms of um, not enjoying where I end up, then I'll go and do that because I know I'll enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so it was always kind of 
tempting, but just how how high can I get up in in the UK or or wherever and try and get as high as I can before I go right? Okay, I've hit my level and then that's it. Yeah. So yeah, luck, luckily I stuck at it. Yeah. Uh, well, like, that's you know. that's probably where me and Ben, for example, and even like a lot of other boys from our um, under 20, 23 Aussie team, that's where we first met you. Um, you know, like the ones like yourself that stayed overseas, you know, you, you're in the shop window. All you need is one good season or a couple years of promotions and, and things change. But if you're in Australia, yeah, it's so it's so hard to, to get out of. And that's, you know, Ben would say the same. When he was in Scotland, he should have just stayed there at Hearts. And when I was in Holland and we got relegated, I should have just stayed there at NEC Nijmegen. And things open up, even though you think it's a second league there, maybe the money's not as good, but you are in a position where, you're half a season or a season away um, from getting a massive move. But the second you come back here, not that the standard's not good. I think the standard's a lot better than what people give it credit for. It's just that people overseas don't see it as as a top league. So they're scared to sign players from it. It's the, it's the exact same here though. Like even like you don't get many boys um, in England move, like maybe to Scotland, that's, that's a bit different, but you don't get many boys move to like Holland, for example, they just, mm. I don't know what it is, but every, every country seems to feel like, right, well, you're playing League One in England, so that's like the third tier. So the third tier here isn't great at whatever country it is. Yeah. So it's not going to be great where you are. You're obviously not a great player. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, that's just how they, they just perceive it almost. It just feels like, so I get what you're saying. Like it's, and I guess the other thing with the A-League is it's like, there isn't that, um, like like you said, like I've I've gone from League One to the Premier League in two seasons, just yeah. with the same team. Yeah, it's, it's like you got the promotion. You know what I mean? Like that that there, is, as much as that's like, like never ever happens, like or not often anyway. Like you just that's impossible nearly because you can't it do can. it. Yeah, it can happen over there, whereas over here it, it just it yeah. can't. It's just like yeah, like you like okay. So you you if you're gonna stay within Australia, your best your best bet is to. Okay, like say for example, the the Mariners boys, like they've had like a like a couple of really good seasons and they've got moves, or you go from I don't know a team that's near the bottom, but you're doing really well and you end up a team at the top, like a maybe a slightly yeah. better club or whatever. That's like that's kind of what you're looking at, um, yeah. and it's not easy like to to do, especially with the league. They don't obviously there's no like the transfers are different, right? So like yeah. buying players is not really a thing. So it's just no. different. It's uh yeah, it's something that I think all all young Australians, like in any advice if I was ever speaking to anyone about going over, there's nothing wrong with playing in the A League for a certain period, but if you get the chance to go, you gotta go and not come back. Like you need to exhaust all options. Try and stick like, out, yeah. yeah, like what you know, you've gone to the lower leagues in England and you know what, you probably could have got more money in back in Australia. It would have been easier, more comfortable, but you go there, you scrap it out, you fight, and you know, luck comes your way, you get promoted two years in a row which is obviously like you said very very rare but you know what if you took an offer from Perth Glory back in the day that chance was never going to happen so you make your own yeah. life in football um so how how did that that move kind of come about so obviously after Akrican Akrican Stanley you've gone to Ipswich um why did you move there and and how did it actually kind of come about so I I loved the Accrington it was like it's the most like the Unprofessional is not the word. Like they, they, it's like they're 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 dealing with what they've got. It's one of those clubs that it's like they've they should never be where they are. It was just a base. It was just based on good a good manager who knew that he was the perfect fit for the club. Like we had no sports science, no um, like one of the coaches done the warm up. We had one physio uh oh, we, had, we had two actually but one was a bit more part-time um and the part-time one would like you used to say like if you wanted a, a rub or something like that you'd say like um what did he say he was like uh good players don't need them and shit players don't deserve them <laughs> and that was that was your that was your response <laughs> okay so i'll get him on then <laughs> Or like uh, he wanted to rub but off. Why, you know? why weren't you getting one? Yeah. What's that? Why weren't you getting one? 
you know, either, either it doesn't matter. I'm just not getting one anyway. You just can't be asked to do it. But no, it was it was funny. Like there's to be fair, there's some good podcasts out there that um his name's Ian Liversidge. There's a few ones when he I think he was at Burnley as a as a physio. There's some good there's some funny stories about him. That's um, good. But he used to like even like uh, Fridays. You couldn't get a rub on a Friday because it was fuck off Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like this is like it used to be so funny. Like just um like you would there was like the gym only just was starting to get built. Like they built like, in a little porter cabin. Um, we're talking like yeah the standard bogs like bog standard size porter cabin. Um, so there was not really a gym. Um. There was like a community training, like facility that it was really good, like after turf, a couple of pitches. Um, but like, the the community team had the right of like training. So if they had, if they were training at like say twelve o'clock, we had to be off the pitch by twelve o'clock, you know. <laughs> and then we're the, we're the professionals. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> is that just because it's just naturally a smaller club? They're historically yeah, a smaller just, club, but yeah, basically. And they just- no fast, no bother. Just get on with it. Nah, Let's make just, the most yeah, just drop your ego at the door. Like, yeah. And like, what we, league like, were they in? Up, what league was it? They, they, that was league, league one. one. That was um, league. Where did you finish? Uh, I want to say ninth or tenth, maybe. It's the highest to finish. Um, so over, but it was like, yeah, or big time. They they have been for for years. Um, but like, it, I guess. They're really good at, like, they don't really have a recruitment team, but the manager finds gems. Like, he just get, gets guys from the lower leagues, uh, like, lower, proper lower leagues, um, finds gems and sells them. Um, and some, there's a there's a lot of players out there that have, that have crossed paths with Aki, basically, at some point, whether it be a loan uh, or, like, my situation, I was a free agent and it was COVID year and, like, I need a, I need a club here and it suited me to Right, come here, play my best football, and um, look if you if you do well and you get a move, then we'll sell you. Basically, that's like you kind of that's what you're going there for. But it was it was a me- that you would you'd be laughing your head off every single day. It was it was price like you would just do like eleven v eleven. Like for example, we've done this one one drill once. We had like a few of the young boys training with us and stuff, and like we'd be doing uh, the coach would lose his shit. Like the assistant manager would lose his shit. Cause we'd do like, it was like a transfer game of three teams, uh, 18 yard, like on the, on at the stadium pitch, 18 yard box, 18 yard box. And the halfway line was like, you had to transfer it over to the other team. So one team's like chasing, trying to win the ball back. And if you can get, it'd be like eight passes and then you can transfer it through. And it would yeah. start off being, um, like under under head height when you transfer and it would get to like the, the point where you transfer and uh boys would be shanking it everywhere and everyone's like pissing themselves so, like taking the piss out of them like laughing their heads off and then like you go I fuck right you can put it over head height then because you aren't getting this the team on the other the team on the other side of the pitch are like standing there getting freezing cold because it's not touched <laughs> the ball in twenty minutes. And uh right, okay you can you can hit it over head height. Just get it over there. Come on boys like we need to be better at this. And then uh we then you couldn't get the eight passes in, or like boys would be taking too many touches, or it was it was just kind of everyone never said this, the pitch is just pissing themselves laughing at them, <laughs> and it got down to the point where we're doing this drill and it, you only need to get one pass in, so <laughs> because they were that shit at it, <laughs> so you just shell the ball over the other side. Someone would just take a touch and set the other lad, and he just <laughs> shell it back. <laughs> the team in the middle was just going like this. They, they got that bad uh, just because like we just couldn't boys. Some boys just. <laughs> they'd be great on a Saturday but they just couldn't do it couldn't get uh, it done. it was yeah and it's like we just had a we had a really good start in 11 um, but out with that like we, we were we were sitting in the playoffs up until maybe like I don't know December time and it was the COVID year when COVID hit and we got to a point where um, I think there was 19 lads got COVID uh, so we had to cancel like when you got COVID you had to cancel like three games or something like that mm. and we get back and then the team we were supposed to be playing had COVID then the team after that had COVID. so we end up having like loads of catch up games there was a point where if we'd cancelled one more game we'd had to be playing like three games a week or something um, and yeah we just didn't have the squad to to sort of keep up with it and it just sort of that's how we ended up like ninth or 10th or whatever it was but 
it was a um, good team and just a good laugh. Everyone dropped their egos at the door and just got on with it. It was good. It's fucking great. You obviously had a good year because Ipswich came knocking that summer and yeah. they were obviously, so they were in the championship the year of COVID. They got relegated. Basically, they, they'd binned all the players. They got new owners in, a new manager. Um, there was only a few lads that were sort of keeping on. Um, and the start of that season, or the next season, sorry, they, they kind of were getting some good players and spending some some big money to get some players in at that level. Um, nothing like Birmingham today, by the way, but um, they're they're spending some yeah. some good money and getting like good players out of the league, you know. Um, and I ended up being signing number nineteen or something out of twenty one signings, which is like unheard of. It was like a full new team. Um, but I remember they, I knew they were interested. And I'm thinking like, right, this is like a this is a big club. Uh, a club that's going to do really well at Aki there's probably a chance we're not that was the best season we we're going to have like it was the club's best season ever basically so you yeah you know what I mean and boys are obviously trying to get moves um, and you want when you got the chance to you want to be the one to get a move basically so I remember they I got told they put they were putting a bid in so they, they put the bid in and it was like half a million pounds or something like that uh, or it was lower than that. It was lower than that. It was like maybe three fifty or something like that. And the manager pulled me and said, "Right, they've put a bid in. I don't want to lose you, but I don't want to step in your way. Like um, you've done really well. You deserve a move. Like if they get to the figure that makes us happy, then I'll, I'll, I'll let you go." Mm. Uh, and he goes, "Cause I'm obviously I know that if it comes down to, it, I'm gonna have to say to them, right, I need to go. Uh, this is a big move for me. I need to, I need to leave." But I remember I sat on a park bench, basically. We were training at a cricket pitch because um, <laughs> we didn't have a training ground. <laughs> and um, he goes, and yeah, they'll probably bid like 500 grand next bid. Um, but that, that won't be enough. So um, yeah, we'll see what it gets to after that. And then the next bid comes in and it's bang on 500 grand. And I'm going, oh. but I can't even go and say anything yet because he told me already <laughs> that's not going to be enough. So he's got me. He's got me by the balls here. I can't. Get, <laughs> what am I meant to do? And I was like, oh, no, like this is not going to work. But and then like I, they they said to my agent that, oh, we're putting one more bid in, and it's not. Like that's our last bid, last chance. And I'm going. This isn't going to happen. I'm I'm stuck here, sort of thing. Um, and then I it was the Friday. And we were, I'd played two games already in the season. Um, and it was the Friday before the third game, basically, and they um. My agent called me and I was like, "What's happening? What's?" And he's went, "It's done." And I went, "Yeah, but what's so what? Like, what's what's going on? Is it like?" He's like, "No, it's done. It's done. We've we've managed to work out. It's done. So just go down there, do your medical, and it's all worked out, sort of thing." And I was like, "They actually accepted it." I don't, I think it. I don't know the exact figure, but I think it was somewhere like maybe eight hundred grand or something like that in the end. Fucking hell! So they overpaid. <laughs> they overpaid. Um, <laughs> so. Isn't it so fucking that, crazy? That. Like, it's just fucking nuts. Like, if Accrington Stanley just thought, no, nah, we're not going to let this guy go, you wouldn't be in the Prem right now. Yeah, that's mad. Like, and you know what? Like I said before, there's loads of boys who have come through. There was actually um, two lads at Ipswich who came from Aki as well um, a couple of seasons before. And uh, one of the boys, uh, Caden Jackson, he told me about a story. I think he was there with. Um, uh, a lad called Matty Pearson, um, and uh, they 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 had like the 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 manager's office was in like a port cabin as well, and there was like a door you used to go through, and it had like a big like it had been punched through basically like a big hole in it, <laughs> and uh, Jacko would like I only met him when I was at Ipswich, so I never knew him at Aki, and he goes to me, oh did you like. Yeah, like I was telling the story that I just told you, like about getting out and stuff, and everyone had the same thing. Obviously, they have their, they have their number, but you have to try and obviously they will let you go, but you have to hit this number, and I think they never hit his number, and he was like, trying to force a move here, and basically that hole in the door was him, <laughs> was him punching it to to like to try and get his move. They were because they weren't accepting it, so. uh 
you hear some good stories about like the boys trying to trying to get their moves like when um when things aren't working out but yeah there's a big hole yeah. in the door which laid it in trying yeah, to get out um, <laughs> but they can't fucking use the money from selling everyone else to fucking fix up the hole yeah literally but they like so so after after i left um the boys at it's just a joke like because we went back there that the next season obviously still in league one um and they basically actually had started work on new um changing rooms because the the change rooms there were like tiny tiny like the so the away team when you went there as the away team Half the team could get changed, and half the team would have to wait outside. Fucking and uh, yeah, and the the massage bed was outside, like under like a little gazebo type thing. Um, and it was, but it was it was brilliant because teams would turn up and go, Fuck, "What is this? Fuck like, what are we meant to do yeah. here?" And you're already one nil up because you're like, yeah. teams are like, they you know what I mean? It was like before they get out the bar. Yeah, yes, yeah, I mean, so it was like a, it was like your like your weapon basically. Um, so. Yeah, they, they built new changing rooms from the money they'd sold a few players from. Um, they had uh, built a new stand, um, what we, we call like Jacko's stand, basically, because he got sold to Ipswich for like 1.7 million or something. So we say that's his stand. <laughs> he paid for the stand. I think I was the Deso pitch. They done the whole pitch up. So we like, used to like laugh about like um, what we managed to get. But I think they, they just basically had a, had a, a model where they basically had to sell a player a season um for 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 a bit of money and that kept them doing well because like they just don't get the they don't have the revenue that other clubs have because it's such a small club small area and they yeah. do really well um but unfortunately that that in that season um when we went up they got relegated so they're playing in league 2 now um yeah just that's just how it went it was probably going to happen at some point it was just you punching above your weight for too long no, absolutely. This week's Guest of the Week segment is brought to you by Motion Sports, the leaders in cutting edge sports tech. As professional athletes, we wear GPS trackers in every training session or game to track our athletic output and measure our match fitness. That's why Motion Sports Soccer B GPS is a game changer for athletes at any level, from beginners to pros. It's designed specifically for soccer players to track performance with precision, offering highly accurate data on key metrics like distance covered, speed, and positioning. Whether you're just starting out or playing at a high level, Soccer B helps you monitor your progress, compare yourself to over 50,000 users worldwide, and build a player profile that stays with you no matter which team you're on. It's simple to use and gives you insights that can help you improve your fitness, performance, and game understanding. Head over to their Instagram at motionsportsau or visit their website www.motionsports.com.au and don't forget to use the code BESTFRIENDS for 15% off your Soccer B GPS. Level up your game today. Fucking not bad. Not bad. I guess that's the the model of, of certain clubs and that's probably where here in Australia um, they've been behind the eight ball for 10, 15 years and now they're finally catching on that selling players like, you know, giving young players a chance, developing them, selling them for money is the best way to make it in football. You know, you can't do yeah. it through ticket sales and even, you know, TV rights in Australia for the other big sports, AFL and NRL, cricket, that's been their, you know, key thing. But for football, you can sell a player for 10, 15 million uh, dollars and you make your salary for 20 players for the season for three years. And yeah. I think it's, it's smart that they've finally caught on to it a little bit, a little bit late to the party, but over, over there, um, that's literally like, like you said, that's how that club's surviving and, and that's their model and it works for them. So it's, it's, it's brilliant. Like that's, that's good business, but we want to get on to uh, Ipswich. We don't want to keep you for too much longer. And, um, Talk to us, obviously, about the the last few years, um, specifically in you know the the double promotion. Um, how how and why you think that's come about? Because it's it's very uncommon. Um, how yeah, like what what was the key ingredients behind it all? So obviously, the the manager changed um, my first season around the December. Just. I guess it was just an element of things didn't really work out. There was a lot of new signings. There was a lot of change. Um, and he came in and just the the way he went about things, um, the sort of new school way of just like, 
every last little bit of detail, uh, no stone unturned. It is like relentless on on everything, really, all the aspects. Um, it just worked. The boys just lapped it up. Um, we got the culture really, really good. Um, a real winning culture. Um, the boss and his staff have like they just like they just made everyone such better players. Like, um, and it's just yeah, it just kind of they that season petered out sort of mid table. Um, and then the start of the next season just went strength to strength. Really, we just like hit everything, just improving. Um, everything gets looked back at. All the all the training is so intense, so detailed. Just every aspect of everything is done properly and the best way. That's the best way I can describe it. It's just, mm. um, yeah, and the and the just the, the style of play was really good. Everyone enjoyed it. Everyone enjoyed working hard, training hard. It just yeah, everything just clicked really. Yeah, it's it's crazy. What like before you had him, let's say as a manager. Did you think that that was possible? Like the amount of detail and the way, like obviously he's improved every individual. Like, did you see the game in that way? Or has he kind of changed the way you think about football and, and how it should be done? Yeah, definitely changed it. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think there's scope to do it in every club. I think um, it takes a certain group of players, a certain type of club, like, you have to like we don't really get like day we get one day off a week um mm. you have to have the facilities there to for people to enjoy being in that training and working mm. hard and like the pitches are all immaculate every day because we like we train hard on them but like there's no like you know what it's like you can you can pass the ball around all you want but if you play on like a pitch that's not great it's going to it's going to affect it right and you're going to yeah. start getting pissed off so there's like there's loads of elements. I don't think you can do it every single club, but it's definitely the way to where it should be done. Uh, he's definitely changed football for me. Uh, how I play it, how I see it, um, just like the thinking of it and the detail is just yeah, it's definitely changed it for me. How was he with you when he came in? Because obviously, so you signed obviously June, July, whatever it is. Start the season with the other gaffer. Yeah, twenty one new players. you you were playing though, weren't you? No, well, uh, when he came in, I was at the start, and then when he came in, uh, I wasn't, I hadn't been for a couple of games. It was a bit of a shit show at the time. We got knocked out in the cup to some uh, teams who should have been beaten. Um, everyone sort of ran our back a bit, and uh, and then there was a bit. Of co- it was still the time of COVID, where if you caught it, it wasn't like the end of the world, but you you had to have like ten days off training or something like that. So. When he came in, I had COVID shot like a few days after. I don't think I'd have necessarily been picked straight away because he went with this similar team that was playing at the time. Um, but I couldn't anyway. I wasn't. I couldn't be selected. And then the the boys. That was obviously the scene. We didn't go up that season. That was just like the sort of halfway through that we were having a mediocre season basically. Um, but the boys who played at the back. I think they set like a club record for clean sheets or something like that. Um, pretty shortly after he came in, so I never really got a chance to get in. Like I couldn't complain. The boys were doing really well. The next season, um, it was like a few game, like a game in, game out, game it like sort of bit of rotation and stuff like that. Um, and then probably about I don't know six or seven games in. That's when I sort of hit my sort of right I'm in the team now and then um, it was around October around about October time I got uh, like, my face smashed up basically by like um, like I slide tackled and the guy like slipped and kneed me in the face um, and I basically got like 40 bolts and screws like all in my the right side of my face so I was out for, that's like, why it looks a bit stiff eight, huh? nine weeks yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, slightly different on each side. So, um, uh, to be fair, it made me better looking, the guy. So, I the thing, so. Um, which was hard. I don't know how he's managed to do that. Um, now, yeah, that's um, yeah. So I got I got smashed up, and I was out for like sort of eight nine weeks. Um, I had to wear a mask when I came back. Um, and yeah, just hit the ground running when I came back and stayed in the team. And then that club record that we had the season before. We smashed it again, um, 
and yeah, got promoted as we probably should with that team and and that manager. But it was like we did it in some style, like we like you know, like ninety nine points and a hundred goals or something like that. Um, yeah. Yeah. and then um, yeah, the championship season came around pretty quick, and it was like right, okay, with the team we had, it was like right, we're where we're supposed to be. Um, there was never a talk of can we get promoted or anything from that, but there was definitely like a I think we can give it a good go. We kind of looked at, we we never really lost, I think we lost like maybe two or three games or something in the League One season. Um, drew a few, but like, like we didn't lose. We barely, really lost. And then the championship season, we, um, we looked at the, or me personally and a few of the boys, we looked at like the championship table from the year before and like there was teams like sneaking into the playoffs that like had lost maybe 12 or 13 games. Mm. Um and you think okay well I can't I just couldn't see us losing that many games. I haven't said that I'd never played right. <laughs> I made my debut there, but I'd never like played it regular, so I didn't know exactly. But I just I don't know. I just because of the way we'd gone about it in League One, I just felt like I just can't see us losing that many games. So maybe we can sneak into the playoffs. That'd be pretty good. Good first yeah. season in the championship, and then yeah, just managed to keep going and keep improving to be fair like we improved again like you watch league one games and you think we were good then but we're different again now doing the same stuff but just better um, you get better players coming in yeah uh the championship season i'm trying to think who was signed in the i don't know who the league one the in the january window of league one we signed that's when mass signed mm. and we signed a few boys then for some uh some good money um for that level good yeah. players um and that helped us get over the line that they were good good signings um and then the championship season i'm trying to think who it was it was pretty close to the league one team yeah. that played to be honest um yeah like and then in the in the january we had to get uh, a couple of strikers in because we basically had none through injuries and stuff like that um, but yeah, we just we had by and large the same team really, um, and yeah, just carried it on and done basically the unthinkable and managed to get to the Premier League. Um, Fucking hell! What like what? I don't know. How how do you sum it up? What what was going through your head when it was like the final game? Who did you just play Huddersfield? Who who did you play Huddersfield? Huddersfield played the final game. Um, yeah, it was like so. Like the last the last sort of six or seven games there was like us Leeds and uh, Leicester Southampton a little bit but they they needed to do probably like a bit of a miracle to to make the top two and like you'd play a game and like I just remember it being like the boss was never like this so in, in the training ground it was never like it but you just couldn't help but go oh Leeds have won and we've drew today or oh, like that's it playoffs this and then like but then by the time game time comes around again, you're like, no, nah, no, nah, we're sweet here. We'll, we'll win this. And then you end up winning it and they draw, Leicester draw, and you think, oh, like buzzing again. It'd just be like up, down, up, down. Yeah. And then we, because of uh, Coventry getting to, when they played Man United in the Cup, in the FA Cup, um, we couldn't play them, so we had to get that game changed. So right for Leeds's, Leeds's second last game, they played on TV on the Friday night. So as that finished, they would only have one game left, whereas we'd have three. And if they'd won that game, we'd have pretty much had to win all three of us. Uh, and we had Hull, who were a good team, and we had Coventry, obviously, who were a good team, and then Huddersfield the last day. And they got beat 4-0 off um, QPR, who were like down the bottom at the time. And you've gone from we need to win all three here. And now they've been slapped and now we have to win like win one draw one or something like that it was or I can't remember. Yeah. Um yeah, and we ended up we drew against Hull on the Saturday. We beat Coventry on the Tuesday and it was basically we had to just get the same result as Leeds and they had um Southampton. Um and 
they end up getting beat off Southampton and we end up winning, obviously. So end up looking way more comfortable than it was. But yeah, it was oh, proper no. like up, down, up, down for the last sort of four or five games. It was like, it was crazy stuff. Like, and then the, nerve, the nerves, yeah. sorry, the nerves yeah. come into it. Like, I know you say, oh, yeah, it's just another game. Yeah, yeah. But come on, in your head, you're thinking, fuck. We could be playing in the Prem this year. It was year. it was worse. It was worse when you were seeing other teams play because obviously at that time of the season, like, uh, uh like they, one of us or two of us would be on TV, so we'd all be playing at different times. So you're like waiting on results, watching the game, or whatever. I couldn't watch them on TV. So like, I remember once, um, I was coming back from, I was getting treatment at the stadium, um by a guy who comes and sees us, basically, that um, helps us out. Um, and I was driving back, and Leeds were playing on TV. And uh, I'm like, I'm not watching this. And my mum was over at the time, because my, um, my second son was due to be born. So she's over. And she's texting me, going, oh, Leeds are, Leeds are getting beat. And I'm going, don't, like, I'm ring, I ring her, and I go, don't, don't tell me. I don't want to hear anything. Don't tell me the result, because every time, you, every time that happens, they'll end up coming back. <laughs> and I swear I must have been four minutes from home, and I've got in the house and leads a two one up. I'm like, Fuck. like I told Getting you not to like you know you were, it was getting to that point you know I'm like I'm jinxing it by watching it and even even that QPR game like we were sitting in the hotel because uh, we were playing the next day and boys are what some boys watch it and I wasn't and I'm seeing boys like putting stuff on the group chat and stuff like that and I still wouldn't watch it until it hit three 0 with like five minutes to go. Like I wouldn't. <laughs> so yeah, it was like it was really like you. It was more off like when we weren't playing. That was the worst. Yeah. Um, when you were playing, you just yeah. When you get out there, obviously nervous. You're like we need to win today, boys, type of thing. But we'd been doing that for eighteen months or something at that point. So it was uh, it was get out there and just do the do the job, which was obviously easier said than done. But there was always that belief there. Yeah, well, and then the celebrations obviously kick off. Big Ed Sheeran comes in. How 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 did uh how did that come about? Obviously, he's a big fan, but like you know, was that something you kind of knew was potentially happening? Um, and then what what were the celebrations actually like? Take us. Yeah, inside. so he um he obviously a big fan, and he comes to games whenever he's not basically touring the world. Um, yeah. but there was a couple of games where I think he maybe wanted to come down and see the boys in the changing room, but um weren't able to make it happen because we obviously had a lot of games at the time and it was like, right, focus on the games type of thing. Um, and then there was uh, a game where he came in the change room. You've probably seen the videos and stuff like that where he came in and the boys are putting on his songs on the speaker and my mom is sing song and that. And he was probably only in the change room for like four or five minutes and then he was gone again. But um, that sort of blew up and a, f- a few other teams were probably fuming off it. But... Um, no, that was good. And then he came in briefly. I think we played Watford because he's good friends with Elton John. And he was at the obviously Watford fan, so he came in a little bit then. And then towards it, I think there was like a talk of look, lads, if if we do it, then we'll go and see Ed at his like he goes to like like a little local bar basically with his mates. We'll go and see him there and we'll have a bit of a lock in. Uh and we'll just have a sing song, have a few beers and like celebrate basically. Um and that's what happened. We just we managed to get promoted. There was obviously like the, the parades and all that sort of stuff for the first couple of days and it was like a a Wednesday night or something and we just like jumped on a bus. We weren't allowed to know where we were going, um, so that nobody sort of found out and bombarded the place. But we just yeah, we were just in a a normal little pub basically and just having some drinks and listening to him singing, singing along and just like having a chat basically, just like he's a normal guy. Fuck, how good's that? Can you knock him back or yeah. what? Yeah, he was he was well on it. To be fair, he was well on it. Uh, buying shots and that, just like, come on, boys, let's get, get drinking. We were all going to Vegas the next day. Oh. We we're thinking, God, I don't want to get too mad. We've like got a flight to catch. We missed the flight. <laughs> right, uh, how but many that was, to get was like, Sheeran? just the one. Just the one. That was just that's that one. Like, he obviously you gotta, comes. You gotta enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah. So I mean, like, it's not. It's never. That's never happened. To, well, it might do. It might get lucky again. But when like, the prime, he might come yeah. back. Yeah, so I, I, that's what I said to him. I said, if we if we stay up, we'll we just do this again next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> so, um, but well, yeah, um, it was it was it was class. It was it was. Um, and obviously, that yeah. went 
they went viral. That's that's something that you know, like obviously the story of you guys was was big enough as it was, but then you put him in the picture. Um, and again, like, you know, here we were talking earlier in it where you're talking about getting changed and getting kicked off the field because of a community fucking club coming on. <laughs> exactly. And now you're with this superstar um, and about to be matching it against the world's best in the Premier League. So you've gone to Vegas then. How was the celebrations quickly there before we touch on the the Prem? <laughs> that was brilliant. So we went we went to Vegas League One um, that season. And there was a couple of a couple of teams out there that that time as well. Um, Plymouth had been promoted at the same time as us and from our league, so we're out right there with them. And then the second year, um, we were there again. So yeah, it was it was pretty similar. Just like good set of lads, just like ending the season in style. Just yeah, just great time, you know. Just um, <laughs> some place. It's it's incredible. Um, so yeah, it was just yeah, just let like, loose and enjoy um... yourselves. Yeah. The lads had their bonuses fucking in their back pocket. Everyone was happy. Well, it um we bonuses wise, you don't get them until I think most clubs are similar, but they I think like clubs in England don't get like the the money from the league until September. So you don't get your bonus till like September, basically. But um so the, like our championship one we like we, we haven't got until the end of this month. So Oh really? Um, yeah, that's just that. That's just most most teams do that. I think they just right. just the way it works. I think that's like the new financial year type thing for clubs, or I don't know something like that. But yeah, so we um we were spending last year's money on the uh, on that one. <laughs> well, that's top. How good. And then then the prem comes along. The fixtures come out. Um, first game Liverpool at home. I'm sure everyone would have been buzzing for that just to get out there. You know you're going to be playing against world class players anyway, so you might as well come up against you know one of the best teams first up at home. Yeah, um, I remember when the fixture day, obviously like that, we were waiting for that, and as soon as it came out, it was like Liverpool and City first two games. You're like, oh, cheers! Like, <laughs> what a way to introduce yourself. But- So yeah, bring it on. That's sort of within reason. Let's do what we're good at. We obviously have to be really wary of like certain things and and how good they are. But um, yeah, I think the boys made a good like a good account of themselves. Um, for the most part in, in both the games. So it was um, yeah, obviously not not great. You end up um not getting points, but it's I guess against those teams, it's probably no one's really expecting <laughs> to get the points either. So it's like it was just the, the experience of it. The robot up top. Exactly, yeah. Um, when he's scoring hat tricks, it's uh, like it's done nothing. It's a bit, um, it's a bit difficult. But yeah, it's um, yeah, just baptism of fire a little bit. But at the same time, like hit it head on. The boys done. The boys done themselves proud. Yeah. What a what a fucking experience. Even obviously for your teammate Maslowonga, you know, to Premier League debut at, at his age, like it's just. Probably a lot of boys in your teams like dream come true to to even be there and to potentially play against some of the best players in the world. It's just yeah, football is fucking crazy. You, you've heard it time and time again with stories like this, but it's fucking amazing. Like the fact that you you boys are in the Premier League and, and you know as Aussies right now, there, there's not many of you there in the Premier League, so it's fucking amazing. Yeah, it's mad. It is it is a mad. Like you said, it's like football is is mental. Like you go through like the biggest highs and the biggest lows like all the time like even day to day like it's it's mad so yeah uh, obviously Mass done really well and like um, yeah he's been trying to get in the Premier League for for a long time and managed to finally do it so um, yeah great great for him and great for the whole club all the boys like absolutely buzzing at the moment so yeah it's um, everything's going good yeah well I think unless you've got anything else you want to touch on, Ben, I know we, we haven't even touched on the national team, which is nah. obviously an unbelievable achievement in itself. But of course, you know, when you're coming up, you know, you're playing in the champ regularly near the top of the table, you're going to get called up and finally get your chance. Um, but, you know, 
we yeah we don't want to keep you for too much longer um so ben unless you've got any other questions uh we can look to wrap it up no man just um want to say a, a massive congrats again and how good it is uh, for Australian football to have boys like you at the moment playing at the very top level. And that's full credit to yourself for sticking it out over there. And uh, I think like you spoke about today, your, your work ethic and your commitment to staying overseas and proving to yourself that you can do it has led you to the Premier League and, and the Socceroos as well. So just want to wish you the best for the season ahead and uh, hopefully talk to you again soon. Yeah, so it's good. Appreciate it, boys. Thanks, uh, thanks for having me on. Enjoyed it. Awesome. Cheers, ladies. No worries. Cheers. And what uh, episode that was. Um, pretty crazy. Um, obviously, the stories talking about the different clubs he was at, obviously, breaking through at Fulham um, and then going all the way back down to the lower leagues and now working his way back up. Um, it's pretty, pretty crazy. Um, something that I think a lot of people would just see Cam playing now for the national team playing in the Premier League but they wouldn't understand or the journey that he's been on probably only those closest to him his family and his friends would know um, but obviously you know us personally having you know kept a keep keen eye on all of the, the Australian players that play overseas we kind of knew um, but you don't know the ins and outs so it was it was pretty cool to hear some of those stories wasn't it yeah it's uh, always amazing to hear the stories behind the, the player, obviously, you see now Cam Burgess playing in the Premier League, but I suppose people don't always know about the, the you know trials and tribulations that you go through as a player, all the times when you get told that maybe you're not good enough or you end up in a position in your career that you're, you're not happy with or you feel like you're at a level that maybe you know you think is lower than what you could be playing at, but... You know, he's one of those Aussie players that really did make a, make a point to stay over there, to stay overseas and, and try and grind it out and, and look at what it's done for him now. He's, he's in the Socceroos, he's starting in the Premier League and yeah, it's, it's an amazing story. Yeah, it is. It's, um, yeah, I guess it's one of that determination um, and willingness to kind of really just be happy with dropping down, maybe thinking that you're better than that level. The easy option was to come back to Australia um, I'm sure Perth Glory would have loved to have had him out there on the weekend um, against MacArthur. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he'll return one day. Um, obviously, he loves he loves Perth. He loves loves Australia. Um, but I think he's got another another good few years in him yet over there in in the UK before he returns to Australia. And um, yeah, excited to see what he can do for the rest of the season. Um, and also with these next qualifiers coming up, uh, he'll be a really important player. So Popovich has shown that he. He obviously trusts him. Um, we'll see if he uh, if he gets the nod in that game against Saudi Arabia in Melbourne. Yeah, no, looking forward to to seeing how the season goes for him, and and hopefully he can nail down a, a starting position with Ipswich because yeah, what an experience! And and even if they are only you know in the Premier League for one year, uh, it's 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 amazing for him. Obviously for Maslowongo as well, who's also there at Ipswich. To be able to get that opportunity, you know, it doesn't matter at what point in your career, but to to be able to say that you've played a season in the Premier League is just is just amazing. So we'll see how that season does unfold for Cam Burgess. It was a great ep, but now we'll go on to the games for this week. We've got the second round of the A-League kicking off, and there's a few big games, to be honest. Obviously, Steph, you had the buyer last week, but... You get your first game this week on, on Saturday at 5pm against Central Coast Mariners. Obviously on Friday night, the first game of the round is MacArthur versus the Jets. We'll see if MacArthur can have another big performance. And then it goes into the Melbourne Derby, Melbourne City versus Melbourne Victory, which is probably going to be the game of the round, hoping for a big crowd at Amy Park. And then later on, on Saturday night, we've got the, the distance derby, Perth Glory versus Wellington. I don't know if we can um, still classify that one as a derby. I know it's still a distance derby, but now that Wellington have Auckland, yeah, they've almost true. got their own, their own rivalry. Um, yeah. uh, Perth Glory need to obviously need to respond after that. Um, and then on a, on a side note, the, the really positive thing is um, the TV ratings from Channel 10 for the, the Sydney derby and the Newcastle Jet City game was up massively, I think 46% on last year's game. Um, so I think the investment made from Channel 10, Paramount, 
um, to do this two games on Channel 10, the pre, pre-game show for the main one, the, the round table during the week, the Ben Garuccio segment, talking about <laughs> Scorpion goals. It's paying off. Um, so we do need to give them plaudits because everybody loves to hammer them. Um, I think they've got everything right in terms of that. And obviously you're seeing the star power of a Costa and a Juan Mata, but also the quality of the league. It was sold out two games. So really excited to see, um, I guess, the progression and, and that keeping on growing. Um, and how funny is it as well on the rest is football. Big Gary Lineker's reading out the Paramount Plus, yeah. the Combank Matildas and the Subway Socceroos. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have been hearing that as well. So that's, that's exactly right. They've obviously put in an investment to make sure that, that the game is visible. And that's what we need. We need the game to be as visible as possible. And I feel like, honestly, uh, you know, I tweeted about it as well, that I think the APL and the broadcasters have done a good job and also the clubs themselves. I think everyone's created a little bit of a, a buzz about the season. So hopefully that, that keeps growing. Hopefully that keeps going as the season goes on, because I think the first round, there were so many positives to take out of it. And now, Heading into round two, it's uh, it's exciting times. Obviously, on Sunday, we've got Auckland at home again against Sydney FC. So we've already tipped that one to be another big crowd before the derby the following week. And then closing out the round is, is Western United, uh, their first home game or our first home game, should I say, against against Western Sydney. So we've got one Mata. He's going to be in Tani, which... Uh, Will be will be interesting when he rocks up there, but um, and then yeah. Brisbane Raw have got the bye, so who's um, going to be another? Who's what's the the round this week for you guys? You said you're doing the the, the Diwali festival and stuff like that. Is it is it Diwali yeah, festival this, first time? Yeah, this is yeah this is the the Diwali festival. So yeah, looking forward to to seeing. It. Obviously, I'll I'll get to see probably a little bit more of it. Um, you know, probably not going to be playing. So I'll get to, maybe I'll get to enjoy a, a cheeky little curry or something <laughs> while the game's going. Yeah, for sure. But no, it sounds, all sounds really good with the league. It's all positive. Um, you know, you, people can still focus on some of the small negatives that, that are going around. But for me, it's been a really positive start. Um, this is what we want. This is, it seems like there's a lot more podcasts coming out, talking about the game, which is the reason why we started it. Um, we don't want other people to not do it because we're doing it. We want as many people to kind of be engaged with the game as possible. So um, thanks again for everyone for listening in. We really do appreciate it. If you've got any feedback, head over to us on any socials and, and let us know. Obviously, we've got our rolling team of the year that we're doing each week. So give us your team. Tell us that we've got no idea, whatever it is. Um, I think our teams were quite similar. Mine comes out very soon. Um, if it's not already out, so you can have a have a look and and tell us that yeah we've uh, we've got no chance of being managers. Exactly right. No, I think they're um I think they're I think they're strong. I don't think too many people will uh, will say that we've got no idea, but I'm I'm sure there's always there's always room for for a little debate here and there. So um, that's all we've got time for today, guys. Thank you very much for listening in. We'll be back again on Monday to review the second round of the A-League game. But for now, that's all. You know where to find us, as always. We're Football Friends Pod on Insta and TikTok. We're Ben and Steph Pod on X and Football Friends with Ben and Steph on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining in for another episode, guys. We'll see you on Monday. Thanks, guys.